Hello, and welcome to the Dallas Express video podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Subiata Bennett. Today is our premiere episode, and I'm very excited for all we have in store for you. I want to take this time to set the stage about the who, what, where, and why behind this podcast in addition to our Dallas Express newspaper. In this era of news and opinion blurring and blending 24-7, it's often hard to differentiate between opinions and facts. In today's age of clicks and views, discernment is the new superpower due to the excessive amounts of content available, which often tends to drive us all farther apart. The primary purpose of what we hope to accomplish is to serve you the full facts buffet so you can cook up your own conclusions. I'm grateful to be spending time today with my husband, Monty Bennett. Monty and I both co-founded the Dallas Express newspaper and will share important pieces with you all today as to why we executed that vision. I will then introduce my dearest friend, Bettina Bronfman, who you will often see with me around town since she leads our newspaper and podcasts, branding and social media. And lastly, we will end with some of my kiddos and I purchasing a bike from our neighborhood store, Bike Mart, off of Lovers. You can check out our newsletter at dallasexpress.com or download our app, found in both the Google Play and Apple App Stores. Today, I'm hosting Mr. Monty Bennett. Monty is the founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of publicly traded company Ashford Inc., and is also the founder and chairman of both Ashford Hospitality Trust and Braemar Hotels and Resorts. He recently ventured into the media realm when we co founded the nonpartisan and nonprofit Dallas Express newspaper, where he took the helm as its publisher. He is a lifelong advocate of civic engagement, advocating especially for children and educational equality. He takes immense pride in giving back to the Dallas-Fort Worth community and is frankly, one of the most generous and down-to-earth people I have ever met. Please help me welcome Monty Bennett. Monty, I'm so excited. We're finally here today. I cannot wait for our viewers and listeners to peer into the mind of Monty. Can you give me your take and insight as to why you believe we launched the Dallas Express newspaper and then this podcast. You bet. Well, first, I want to say thanks for having me. You've done a nice job with this podcast. It's really, really fantastic. And uh, people can see one of the many reasons why I married you. Not only are you beautiful <laughs> and you are brilliant, but you also think all these nice things about me, which I don't think are deserved. So thank you for saying all those nice words. The Dallas Express, um, we started it, and I wanted to start it, because uh, we just wanted the news. And I've heard it from so many people. Yeah. Uh, people just want the news without all of the uh, storytelling and without all the bias and the angles. And I wanted to start it in order to just be able to have the news delivered in an unbiased way so that people themselves can make decisions on issues and to speak to power. And that's a common purpose of journalism is to hold government to account and to hold this power to account because there's a lot of things that need to be done in the city and it needs to be led by those government agencies. Do you believe that at the Dallas Express, we're doing a good job of holding all people accountable? We try to, we think we do. Some of our features are completely numerically driven, mm -hmm. like our crime boss feature mm -hmm. is just driven by those city council people that have the biggest increase in crime uh, year over year for that same month. That's just numerically driven. The bad apple is driven by those DISD trustees that have the most students in D and F schools, mm -hmm. which need to be corrected. And as far as one of the purposes, one of the things that absolutely breaks my heart and I want to see change is the 50,000 students in DISD schools that are in D or F schools. Can you shed light on why those names were chosen? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, crime boss is kind of a neat play on words, right? Uh, because it has ties to kind of mafia sources. And to be fair, it's uh, the, the people uh, on the city council um, to me, they seem to be all very good natured and very well intended. But the purpose of it is to call attention to the crime and crime is a problem in Dallas. We do a lot of polls at Dallas Express and the people say it's a big problem here, yeah. yet uh, it's just not being addressed the way it needs to be addressed. 
um, our police force seem to be doing a great job with what they have, mm -hmm. but they need more officers and they need more tools and we need to give it to them because if you don't solve the crime problem, then nothing else we do in the city matters because people won't be here. They'll be gone and we need to solve it. And of the top 25 cities in the country, we're about in the middle of the pack as far as crime per capita. There's no reason why we shouldn't be the best, why we shouldn't have the lowest crime per capita. Somebody has to be. Why not Dallas? And that's what I want to see. What are you hoping to accomplish by calling out these people who are seemingly not doing their job at this point? You have to focus accountability in order to get change because it's like a, the old stats where people are asked, how do they think our United States Congress is doing? And they get extremely low marks. But then they ask that same person, how do you think your congressperson is doing? And they get very high marks. Mm -hmm. Well, that can't mm -hmm. be true across the country. It's because we see one person and we like them and we like the personality, but we're not holding them to account for the results because after all, there's 500 or so other elected officials and it must be their fault, not our individual congresspersons mm -hmm. or senators. And so what we're trying to do with this focus is to say, no, these people signed up for this. Uh, again, they're good people. They seem to have uh, uh, very good intentions, but they signed up to run our cities and they decided to run and to be elected and to take the job. And so they need to be held to account, just like I'm held to account in my responsibilities and you are in yours and everybody is. So if you could run for city council or mayor or the trustee of a, of a school district, well, then we need to see the results and we need to see crime go down. We need the homeless problem addressed and solved. We need the city to be a great place for business. So businesses want to come here. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have moved to DFW area over the past two or three years. But the city of Dallas has lost population. And there are reasons for that. And if we're not careful, Dallas is going to turn into another Portland, another Chicago, another LA, another city where people flee from. We are rotting at the core and that needs to be turned around. Businesses need to want to move to the core of Dallas. We need people that need to want to move to the core of Dallas. You can only accomplish that if you make great progress and achieve high standards in these areas of homelessness, of crime, of clean streets, yep. of well-repaired streets, of a great business community, and especially education. And that's what needs to improve in order to make our city everything that it could be. What do you believe the primary functions and services or purposes are of a city? That's a good point. And uh, I'm glad you, you asked me. Mm -hmm. One of my criticisms of, of Dallas ISD, even though it's got so many hardworking teachers yeah, and smart does. teachers yep. and great people involved mm -hmm. and even great trustees. But in the few times that I tune in to DISD meetings and look at them, um, I think that the focus should be 150% about the students, how they're performing, and each individual school and how that school is performing. Our state has a grade ranking system of an A through F. And we have something like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 schools that are ranked D or F with thousands and thousands of students in them. But the meetings oftentimes are focused around all kinds of other issues, all, everything under the sun, except for how the students are performing and how the administration is doing getting the results that we expect for our children. Mm -hmm. Similarly for the city, our city has a few basic goals in my opinion, and that is we need to keep homelessness down. That's for the benefit of those homeless individuals that need help mm -hmm. and the benefit of the other citizens who want to be able to move freely throughout the city without being harassed or attacked. It needs to address crime and keep crime down low. We need to have streets that are well-maintained and are clean and are well lighted at night. Uh, we need a strong business environment uh, for uh, companies to exist in and operate in and to attract new businesses here. These are all the basics that a city needs to perform. And then everything else is on top. We need to have a good number of uh, parks, 
and, uh, and a high number of uh, parks per capita. We need to have some great museums and a lot of museums per capita. And there are a few other things, but the city needs to focus on first things first, and that is keeping crime down, keeping the homeless problem well, well, well under control, which it's not, and, uh, and some of these other uh, areas and items that I mentioned is what we need to do. And I think that needs to be the focus of our upcoming budget. Solve the crime problem first, and then everything else we can go and pursue. But crime is probably the number one issue that needs to be addressed in every city, always. Can you tell our viewers and listeners some of the difficulties or challenges that we experienced when we launched this paper? Trying to find journalists that would keep their opinion out of the writing. Uh, we've got a great, great lot of journalists and reporters now, but that's because we went through a number because so many journalists are trained to put things in context yeah. when they report on something, which is just code for inserting their opinions on things. And people don't want their opinions. People are sick of them. Yes, the far left and the far right want those opinions because they want that it to be affirmed in their views all the time. But that's not what this paper is about. Just about everything was a challenge at the beginning. Yeah, I remember. I remember those nights. Um. Well, to, to brag a little bit, as you know, I think uh, the Dallas Morning News and respect to them, have something like 60,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can boast now that after two and a half years, we have approximately 250,000 subscribers that receive our newsletter every single morning. Yeah. Now, we're free. That's what I was just about the, to say. The Dallas Morning News <laughs> pays. Yeah. We're free. Yeah. So that's the reason, um, one of the reasons. But I also like to think it's because of our fair reporting and reporting on issues that really matter to people. And those are the ones that I mentioned. Those are the core functions. Those are what people want to hear. So we've had fantastic success in these first uh, two and a half years and our numbers keep going up every single month, whether it be website hits or newsletter opens or the like. Yes. And thank you. And I did want to correct one thing. We welcome opinions in the opinion section or in an op-ed. That's right, that's not in the section that's typically called hard news. Exactly. Hard news is yep. hard news, but you hardly see hard news anywhere else in the country, in any publication. Mm -hmm. it's, it's opinion laced in there everywhere. Yep. One thing that I'm particularly excited about is this podcast. What role do you foresee this podcast playing in the entire mission and purpose of what is Dallas Express? What we feel like we lacked what I did is kind of a more personal human element. We've got lots of great reporters, but they're in a newsroom and they write out the articles and by and large, what we have from them is the written word. And Dallas Express is so much more than that. And I wanted to bring a human element to Dallas Express. And this podcast is doing that, especially with you, Sarah, and you're so personable. You can bring that human element to the Dallas Express to make it more relatable to the citizens in town. Tell us about the app and two, give us some exciting pieces that we can hold on to in things that are going to be coming in the future. Well, the app was just launched a few weeks ago. We're very excited about it and it's in the Google Play and the, uh, the Apple Store. So please download it and it just makes things every so much easier with the uh, notifications and the likes. So I'm very excited about it. I use it every day and it's a w great way to access the sites, especially uh, on the go uh, with my uh, iPhone. And as far as excited about the future, there's a lot of things that I'm very excited about and it's hard for me to depict just one, but I think I'm excited about making a difference in this city. That is what I'm really looking forward to. And that's what I think Dallas Express is going to play a big role in helping to bring about. Thank you for that, Monty. Thank you for every bit of your time today. I was thrilled to have you as our premier episode interviewee. I hope you join me again, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. I'll be back anytime you want me. For the start of our next segment, today I'm introducing my dearest friend, Bettina Bronfman, who, like I mentioned earlier, heads the branding and social media of the Dallas Express newspaper and this podcast. Bettina was raised in Manhattan for most of her life with a few years spent living in London. Bettina went to the prestigious Parsons School of Design and has recently decided to bring her experience in branding 
Design and Art Curation in Dallas, Texas. Bettina, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us here in Dallas and at the Dallas Express newspaper and podcast. What is it what actually brought you to Texas and then Dallas besides me living here? <laughs> um, yeah, of course. But besides you living here, um, I think really what brought me to Dallas is um, I grew up in New York City. Um, I have a lot of love for New York and uh, everything that it has to offer. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there, but I believe in a city such as Dallas, there is more opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much potential for growth. Yeah. Um, the opportunity to uh, work uh, for something that I really, really believe in, which is uh, this podcast and the Dallas Express, uh, really encompasses why uh, I came to Texas and, and Dallas specifically. You've mentioned the art scene in particular. Yes. Can you tell me how some of your main inspirations, I guess everything in your life has brought you to the Dallas Express and the work that you're going to be doing with us? Yes, um, of course. So I grew up uh, with parents who love art. Mm -hmm. um, mostly my dad's love for art came out in music and film and my mom came out in modern art. Um, I grew up with extremely artistic parents who um, always embraced that side of me. Uh, we went to many a museum uh, while growing up, which uh, was not super fun for the rest of my siblings. But <laughs> I, I, definitely, I definitely enjoyed it and I think it uh, really helped shape my my love for art. And when it comes to working for the Dallas Express, can you touch upon your experiences with leading branding and social media and how you see it aligning with things that you want in a community? Yeah. Um, well, I haven't ever heard of a fully nonpartisan paper uh, like the Dallas Express mm -hmm. and um, not just one that preaches it, but also practices it. And so my experience um, has been wonderful because I really believe that the opinion should be left up to the people and, yep. and the facts should be true and not spun in any way. I agree with you. Thank you for sharing that. And lastly, you and I love the third segment because it really showcases the heartbeat of the community. You guys, the third segment ah, is so the best. Fun. It's, it's so the best. Fun. It's yeah. so fun to do. Well, this is also just such a great thing to be able to do as a new Dallasite um, to have this opportunity because I can go explore these these places that I probably otherwise wouldn't. And, and then you guys can hopefully go explore them too. Today, we're actually going to show our viewers and listeners when the twins and I went to Bike Mart. It's such a lovely place over off Lovers. And I thought it would be a really nice, warm way to launch this premiere episode. I hope you all enjoy viewing and listening to our little day of errands around the town. I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday. Adios. Alrighty, we made it to Bike Mart's Preston Hollow location. The store features about 4,000 square feet dedicated to bicycle sales and service along with anything the heart can imagine for biking. Anything that helps my family and I get outside and moving is my kind of place. I was so happy to walk in and see JP. He's helped me find three bikes for our family. He's a very kind and knowledgeable sales rep and he's extremely patient, which my kiddos and I so appreciate. So we're now in the back of the store. They've actually been locally owned and operated for about 60 years. And this particular location opened in about 2021. So our kiddo outgrew his last bike and we found a perfect, regular, non-electric or hybrid bike. They probably have about one to two more years until we purchase that pedal assist or hybrid bike because those things can move. Hi, thanks for joining us today on our little outing to Bike Mart off of Lovers. It's one of my favorite places and JP is the reason, honestly, that I fell in love with it. He, I was looking for that hybrid bike right there, that little mint one, and that's mine. My husband actually drove it around uh, to our neighborhood stores and eventually bought himself one just like it. And now you can see we have one for one of our sons. Love that place. Thanks for joining and tune into the next show. Bye.